कोकस रेडियो डुरेंस माइक्सो कोकस एक्सेंथस यस यस सीनिया पेस्टिस एस्चेर एस्चेरिया चिया पोली सेल मोनेला टाइप टाइफिम मिरियन इपिलोपिसिकम स्पिसेल युडो मनस सिरेने जे कासोनेले रडी सेल मोनेले एंटेरिका सरो वर टाइफी बैसिलस एंड process so out of this the majority that you told are like some of that are pathogenic bacteria you know and like dinococcus radiodurans they survive high amount of radioactivity you know that uh, yes there was written and escherichia coli is also helpful for our body at some point of time so the names that you told some are good bacteria some are bad and some of them we also use in our daily life for example dinococcus radiodurans because they can tolerate high amount of radioactivity often the bioactive compound that they produce they are used in cosmeceuticals industry for example in cosmeceutical industry you prepare a cream to get like sun protecting activity and often the biomolecules produced by them the enzymes the biomolecules polymers they are applied in the, those kind of cream so that that can give additional sun protecting factors so th that was the model that we wanted to tell in the last class that uh, to give a glimpse to the other students i will just go into the um, presentation mode let me know that if it's visible or not it's visible is it visible okay. now uh okay i understand i understand mm, i think i have to go the entire screen yes now i think will be now is it visible full screen okay so for the other two students i will just give a short brief in in maybe in 10 minutes uh, and for shibang also to like brush up the thing we were talking last day how bioinformatics can be used in microbiology what is the bioinformatics is a very interdisciplinary subject when we call interdisciplinary what does that mean that several disciplines are together and making one subject to understand for example bioinformatics deals with computational biology with uh, biochemistry with with physics with mathematics with statistics and all these systems all these um, subjects together making this interdisciplinary field called bioinformatics where bio microbiology is also included so we want to understand how microbiology is included in the part of bioinformatics how bioinformatics can be applied to understand microbiology so what is bioinformatics where we apply some computational tools it's entirely in we can do it in computer when i was doing my phd my doctorate my supervisor told one beautiful thing that what you can do in a laboratory when you have only a glass of water and a computer with some internet connection and that's the beauty of bioinformatics that you can do a lot of science sitting in a table with a computer that you have and now it is you all kids are very tech tech savvy you all are using mobile phones laptops so if you learn bioinformatics you can do a lot of science in the time that probably you are gaming that you are probably dedicating into other things to do something like a game to understand biology so we will talk more about microbiology however what is bioinformatics applying the computational tools to organize analyze understand and visualize and to store the information associated with biological macromolecules what is macromolecules where the molecules are macro like protein nucleotide 
DNA, nucleotide DNA, DNA or RNA, protein, nucleotide, carbohydrate, lipids, these molecules are biological macromolecules that are present in the biological bodies. So in 1970, this term was coined by Pauline Hodgweg and Ben Hesper. What they describe? The study of informatic process in biotic system. So that is a bioinformatics. Study of informatic process in biotic system. It's also referred to computational biology, but there are some difference. That computational biology mainly deals with the modeling of biological system. Whereas bioinformatics are mainly divided into two factors. One, you develop the tools or and the algorithms all obviously to run the tools and to analyze and interpret the biological data using those tools or the algorithms that were developed. So what are microbes? When we think about microbes, we always think like microbes are bad. After COVID-19, we have a lot of fear about microbes. So actually microbes, we always think like virus, bacteria, but there are a lot of variety of microbes. There are bacteria, we have bacteria in air, in water, um, the, in soil. We have archaea that are there in the extreme systems like the hot springs, like the Himalayan um, ice glaciers, like the two poles, Arctic uh, part and Antarctica. There are fungi. Fungi are two types. There can be unicellular and there can be multicellular. So this unicellular fungi, we can we have to see them under microscope. So they are also my, my microbes. Algae, the microalgae are also you have to see them under microscope. So they are also microbes. Protozoa like amoeba, uh, like um, um, entamoeba, this kind of groups are protozoas and viruses. So inside microorganism, it's not only prokaryote, they are a eukaryotic microorganism too. And where can we find them? We can find them everywhere. We can find them as I was telling, in the air, in soil, in water. Obviously in air, the colony number of bacteria that you can find is low. Because what is the nutrient that they can get in air? Very less, isn't it? Whereas in water, there are nutrients. So obviously, the count of microorganism is much higher in water. And if you compare in plants, in the soil, obviously soil have a lot of nutrient because the microorganisms are doing carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, oxygen cycle, sulfur cycle. So they are basically maintaining the biogeochemical cycle of our world. So because they have nutrient, the amount of microorganism, the load of microorganism is very high in soil. So basically in soil, they can be free living or they can be inside the plant root. So if they are inside the plant root, they make some interactions with the plant and they make a microbiome. We probably all heard about biome. What is biome? We probably all know one particular big understanding the ecosystems in a bigger version. And it's the, in this case, it is a plant biome. If there are bacteria, Inside an animal, for example, we as a human, we have 10, the, the cells of human cells that we have, more than 10 times we have bacterial cells inside our body. So that is human microbiome. If there are bacteria inside the body of a tiger, so it's a tiger microbiome. So microbes are basically everywhere. We have the idea that they are good microbes. We have the idea they are bad microbe. But you know, among 100% of microbes, if we think we have in the world, only 1% is known till date. And 99% of them, we really don't know who are they. So they are everywhere, but we do not know them. And there is the importance of identifying the microorganism. And there comes bioinformatics also, because Shivang probably have seen last day that we were identifying the bacteria with the help of bioinformatics. So the 99% that is not known that we need to know, there can be good bacteria that is giving the body's nutrients, that is helping in the biogeochemical cycle. There can be bad bacteria also that is infecting pathogenicity, ingesting pathogenicity in a body. Not only human body can be plant pathogens, can be animal pathogens. So 
they are basically present in all this kind of ecosystem i don't know if some of you have went to himalaya with your parents to travel in himalaya there is a lot of ice isn't it some of you have seen ice in mountains are you listening kids because if i do not get response from you then probably you have just kept the computer in muted and you are not listening i had not seen himalayas but in other countries european countries there are snow and ice so i have went there so i uh-huh. when i was young so i have seen that so in those eyes basically if you see there are less plants isn't it when when there is snow fall and all it's totally covered with snow isn't it yes if you compare with himalaya or you compare to antarctica the snow over there is permanent so we call them permafrost there are environment extreme like down the sea there are hydrothermal vents because of tectonic activity those plates are always active and the water that comes from those ridges are very high in temperature there are hot springs in india we have thar desert if some of you have visited thar there are arid, these are arid environment very less water there are uh, nuclear contaminated sites so in all these sites that are very extreme the temperature is high the salinity is high too much salt too much metals too much radiation the atmospheric pressure is high microorganism lives over there and maintain the ecosystem and helps in maintaining the biogeochemical cycle of our planet earth imagine how is mars now the mars now earlier there is report that rover curiosity probably give that mars earlier have those detections that there was water flowing isn't it there are those images beautiful that looks like that once upon a time the water was flowing and then it got dried those are biological signatures isn't it imagine if we do not have bacteria and there is no nutrient cycle nutrient cycle in our planet earth our planet earth once we after some time or after a long time will be a dry planet like mars that was earlier having life was vivid uh, was flowing with water was having the signatures we do not know those were the signature of animals or plants but the mi- the microorganisms as a whole is maintaining the ecosystem of our planet earth so losing them can have a great impact and this is the reason we need to know them like for example when we see a plant we see a mango plant we see them from far and seeing we can know isn't it that that's a mango plant with the leaves itself we can know or not some plants that you know like in your home probably you have a guava tree or probably in your home you have a lemon tree or you have a tulsi tree or you have a mango tree if you see those plants can you recognize them which plants they are uh sometimes i can recognize but sometimes i get confused mm-hmm. <laughs> that's common actually because often the plants have different varieties so in this age it's okay but when you will get up when you will grow up more bigger probably seeing a mango plant from far you can tell them that that's a mango tree or that's a tulsi tree or that's a guava tree or that's a neem tree or that's a, you, you can see them from far and you can they are or that's a banyan tree the, the the good thing in plants or the macroscopic organism when you see a dog you know that it's a dog isn't it do we get confused no no if we see a cat we know that that's a cat the problem with microscopic being is how to know who is bacillus and who is escherichia coli or how to know who is a geobacillus and who is a mycobacterium seeing we can tell them who they are no no 
because we can only see their shape that probably they are like a rod or they are like a comma but seeing them we cannot tell that this is this bacteria exactly their genus and species by name we cannot tell there comes the application how can we see and identify a bacteria when they are really so so small this is the reason traditional microbiology needed the help of bioinformatics because for example in traditional microbiology we do gram staining we paint them paint basically we paint paint the bacteria the colonies of bacteria with a stain called crystal, crystal violet and safranin now the bacteria that bind with crystal violet become violet in color and safranin is pink so we can see some bacteria are violet they are gram positive and some bacteria are pink and they are gram negative but seeing those bacteria we cannot tell who they are we can only see okay some are circle they are cocci some are rod they are bacilli so in compound microscope we can only know till that now if we want to see it more bigger how they look exactly how their surface is we can do some microscopy now it is there are electron microscopy and you know a lot of the years different scientist own nobel prize in developing this microscopic techniques so scanning electron microscopy help in understanding the surface of uh, uh, a bacteria or any any kind of component their surface transmission electron microscopy what they do it goes inside the bacteria the electron and let you visualize what is there inside the bacteria in case of confocal microscopy what they do you can see the layers for example there is one bacteria be here below that one there is another one there is another one like this and with confocal microscopy you can see in different levels where the bacteria are located and in atomic force microscopy you can see how their length is so you can see three dimensionally how the microorganism look but all these how they look you do not know who they are so they are the bioinformatics the torch bearer there is a technique called 16s gene sequencing 16s rna gene sequencing where you need to use bioinformatics where is the use i do not know that if you have studied about ribosomes or not do you know what is ribosome have you heard of ribosome kids no you know inside the cell inside any cell it can be a prokaryotic cell do you know what is prokaryote and eukaryote yes ma'am Do you know what is a prokaryote and what is a eukaryote? Try to respond, kids. If and if you don't know, let me know that you do not know, so that I can at least tell. No, I did. I don't. Okay. Ma'am, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. Ma, I know. can you please let let us know like what is a prokaryote and what is a eukaryote now i know that uh, uh, prokaryotes have don't uh, don't have their uh, uh, nucleus and eukaryotes have nucleus actually prokaryote do not have a nucleus but have the genetic material isn't it we call yes, them sir. nucleoid but their nuclear structure is poor yes That's... the structure is there is not nuclear membrane we only have genetic material but in case of eukaryote we have the genetic material in, inside a nucleus so there is another difference between a prokaryote and a eukaryote both have ribosomes why the what is what is the need of ribosome for the function of proteins because ribosome helps in the functioning of proteins so these the ribosomes that they have one prokaryote have 70s ribosome and the eukaryote have 80s ribosome what is s is for swedberg swedberg unit 
So basically, the seventieth ribosome have two subunits. One is a bigger subunit, fifty, and another is a thirty, small. So it's like they are together, bind like this. Okay. If this is, if this small structure is seventieth, in eukaryote is bigger, sixtieth a big, and fortieth a small. Something like this. So this seventieth, fiftieth, and thirtieth two subunit, one big subunit, one small subunit. They are again made up of some subunits. So it's like packed with another sub subunits, twenty three s, five s, and some ribosomal protein. In case of thirty s, in case of bacteria, sixteen s, and some ribosomal protein. This sixteen s. The sixteen s RNA, sixteen s RNA is widely present in all bacteria. Why they are widely present in all bacteria, and do we use them to identify bacteria? Because they are housekeeping genes. What does that mean? That the housekeeping genes in one bacterial genus or one bacterial species is same. So, for example, all the Bacillus subtilis in this world. Have similar 16s RNA gene. That's the way. If we sequence the RNA, we know we use bioinformatics and we come to know that they are Bacillus subtilis. All the bacteria Escherichia coli have same 16s RNA sequence, nucleotide sequences. So when we sequence them and we put bioinformatics into it, we know okay, this is a Escherichia coli. so basically what we do with this sequencing method a t t g c c like that there is a big uh, sequence seeing that we know basically what the sequence machine do they give us what is after what the basis the structure basically it assist with differentiating between closely related species for example uh, bacillus anthracis and bacillus cereus are very closely related bacteria so they have maybe one base difference and one become if one uh, guanine become a cytosine one is becoming a anthracis one is becoming a cereus the is just an example but to understand that's the way the closely related bacteria can be identified with the base pairs so basically there are a lot of housekeeping genes but 16s is very universal so they help us to study bacterial phylogeny and genus species classification a lot of clinical laboratories the hospitals the institutes use this method to identify the pathogenic strains for example one person is having a tuberculosis and coughing you do not know that what disease this is you take the sample you do some sequencing you see that the bacteria is mycobacterium tuberculosis and you get the confirmation that the person was having tb that's the use of microbiology with bioinformatics in the field according to the guideline of classification that if there is less than 97% similarity they are definitely different bacteria more than 97% uh, uh, similarity then they can be the same bacteria if it's 100% it's definitely definitely same and definitely microbes are in our daily life we use them in food industry in fermented foods like curd like uh, different pickles uh, like tofu like cheese like yogurt sauerkraut in all this food we use bacteria so in food industry they are highly used in fermentation in medicines they produce a lot of antibiotics antimicrobial compounds medicines so in pharmaceutical industry and medicine industry they are used regularly also they are used in wastewater treatment plant for example when the municipality take the solid waste from us or the liquid waste is getting dumped in a treatment plant if the bacteria can degrade those pollutants in a liquid waste plant they flocculate they bind with the bigger particles and they get flocculate and get precipitated in the down so from the top you can take the clean water out that's the use in liquid waste remediation and in solid waste microorganism have the capacity to degrade a lot of toxic compounds 
so even in waste water recycling or waste recycling they can be used and another that we talked a little before in microbiomes can be rhizospheric microbiome of a plant when they are present in the root they give the plant protection against pathogen tolerance against abiotic stress like temperature uh, heavy metals drought salinity they help in growth and development because they change the nutrients into each other help the plant to acquire nutrients and definitely in physiology and metabolism of plant the similar for the animals for the human so they make a microbiome <coughs> so regularly in our daily life microbes are present in everywhere and in this time of global warming we are losing them we are losing our ecosystem and we are losing the microorganism so we need to know them before we lose them and there comes the technique that we were talking the last day probably as as we come to know that few people have not studied before these things probably we will not go into so much of the hands on but i will just show you how we can see how we can see which bacteria it is so basically to understand which bacteria it is we isolate the bacteria in a particular media we extract dna we amplify the dna in a pcr cycle polymerase chain reaction probably you all have heard of pcr in the time of covid we sequence a part of the 16s rrna gene and we compare the sequence gene with the gen bank to obtain a match if the match 100% similarity they are the same bacteria okay so i will show you how for example here we are giving an example of bacillus leuciniformis and i can show you how you can understand with which bacteria it is showing the similarity it is really bacillus leuciniformis or not so so when we are talking about bacillus leuciniformis when you are talking about understanding which bacteria it is other than that we can also get an idea of the structure of proteins in a in the the proteins that the microorganism produce microorganisms produce a lot of proteins that we are using in our daily life to give an example in the clothing industry we use starch isn't it to make the cloth more uh, more in order we use starch to make it iron and in clothing industry we use an uh, one enzyme called amylase that interact with the starch but because of the high temperature processing of starch often the bacteria that produce this enzyme their structure get disoriented so there's the use of knowing the structure of the protein protein normally have four structures primary secondary tertiary and quaternary not only in bacteria in all the uh, organism normally protein have four structure primary secondary tertiary quaternary so in primary they are like a thread one wire in secondary like a coil in tertiary a bended coil and in quaternary you take two tertiary one bended coil and another bended coil together you mix them they are a quaternary structure like hemoglobin in our blood is a quaternary structure protein or insulin hormone in our body is a primary structure hormone so i will i will go talk a little about today's topic are you able to see this slide yes so i will not go into much deep because what i was realizing that because you people have less exposure on understanding what is protein i will talk very basic i will just show you how you can play with them and you can just play with them but i will not go into too much hands on with it so the proteins are made up of amino acids don't feel fear with the big big structure just see that we have total 20 amino acids in our body glycine alanine serine threonine cysteine so basically protein is a macromolecule protein are made up of molecules these are the molecules the amino acid total 20 amino acids we have and these amino acids you can see the name so when a primary structure is made 
one after another after another amino acids make a structure joined with each other so human insulin i was telling you you can see how they look like one amino acid with another with another tyrosine cysteine proline together one after another they are a primary structure hormone a secondary structure can be a helix like a coil or more stretched like a beta sheet a tertiary structure protein can be albumin do you people know where is albumin where you can get albumin you people eat eggs the egg white part you know yes there is two parts yellow and white white that white part is entirely egg albumin so for that egg white is very good for health because it's a pure source of tertiary structure albumin protein and the quaternary structure can be a dna polymerase DNA polymer is that double the amount of DNA that multiply the number of DNA of our body or hemoglobin. So, with bioinformatics, we can know their structure. For example, if you are using a database, you can just put the name of the protein, and in the database itself, give you the composition of the protein. You see that you put the structure of a protein amylase. and right side when you put it in this database called plot param expasi uh, website it gives you the composition entirely how much percent how many amino acids exact details we you can try with any protein in this database that you know and the database will give you the composition do you know what is database you have some idea what is database Hmm? Do you know what is database? Do you have some idea? Like, what do you feel? What can be a database? Kids. Yes. Hmm. Now, a presentation of data. Uh, a presentation of data can be, or another is, in a database you can deposit also presentation and deposition also. For example, in nowadays we have a lot of data, isn't it? Data science is a very big field of science nowadays. In bioinformatics, we keep the biological data. For example, how many amount of DNA we have? How many species we have in our world? the dna databases have deposited all those sequences this is the way we do not lose them and this is the way we get to know them also so for example a dna database can be ncbi uh, national center of biotechnological information ncbi in the in ncbi database you jinjin bank you have deposited all the dna structure in protein database like pdb protein data bank there you have deposited all the protein structure there are carbohydrate database like carb db where you have deposited all the carbohydrate structure there are even databases of rice rice db database of e coli uh, database of c elegans uh, so even there are specific database there are database of arabidopsis a plant so when you go into this rice db or you go into this arabidopsis database you open the website and you get all the information of all the genes all the proteins all the molecules their actions their functions inside the same website that is the beauty of a database so when we were showing you when we were when i was showing you the bacillus lichenniformis how to identify them that was a dna isn't it it's a nucleotide 16s rrna a nucleotide so there you have to work in a nucleotide database website and here when you are working with a protein you have to work with a protein database example of a protein database is this rcsp pdb example of a nucleotide database is ddbj for example dna data bank of japan 
or gene bank of ncbi there is an example where you can see secondary structure of protein for example you give the sequence or uh, of uh, one protein and look it's giving you directly with the sequence and how much percent of alpha helix they have beta sheet they have so the entire composition they are giving to you so if you just put the information you take the protein from the protein database bioinformatic tools give you all the information related to the protein here is a example of tertiary structure analysis with another software called esbri so you download the protein you put the information of the protein here and it show you all the interactions this is the beauty of bioinformatics in microbiology not only in microbiology in different other fields when you know the gene when you know the protein you have the basic information with you with that you can generate the entire structure function interrelationship data using bioinformatics so i will just like show you a little uh in cbi this is national center for biotechnological information here look all the databases that they have you select nucleotide and for example let me write sk richia coli 16s rrna here you get the escherichia coli 16s there are a lot of sequence actually you look a lot you can see how many sequences are there there are more than 66 lakhs of sequences so let me just select one sequence and look there you get all the information in 2019 it was deposited and you go click faster you get the entire sequence also look adenine guanine thymine thymine guanine adenine the entire nucleotide sequence if you go into this option called run blast i am just showing you you will see why it's escherichia coli you just compare them with the rrna database with all the bacteria that is there all the bacteria and archaea you blast it and you will look it will show 100% similarity with escherichia coli it normally takes a little time to show the result i will show you the same with the by the time the results is coming out this is the protein database that i was calling you rcsb pdb okay so the result came and look it's showing 100% similarity with entire total query coverage 100% look the maximum score 2667 and the total score is 2667 also showing 100% identity with escherichia coli strain or not you see with there is shigella there is escherichia fargusoni there is shigella flexneri shigella sonei escherichia alberti but showing the similarity maxima with another escherichia coli so when the similarity is 100% the bacteria is same this is the beauty of bioinformatics in microbiology or the application of bioinformatics in microbiology when you know the sequence you use blast you compare them with all the sequence that are deposited in the database it compare your sequence with all the sequence that are submitted and it gives you the result directly it gives you the result directly which bacteria it is for example when we are you can try with any bacteria like uh, he was saying yersinia pestis he was saying mycobacterium tuberculosis you try with any bacteria similarly you go to this page called i will just paste the page for you all there 
I will. Okay, okay. I will share the link of RCSB here. So here is the link of RCSB. That's a protein database, protein data bank. Look the name. You search with any protein. Do you know kids name of any protein? Any of you? You just let me know any name of a protein. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Albumin, I was telling kids, isn't it? I, I write a name of one. Uh, I will uh, write a, uh, the enzyme that I was telling regularly getting used in the clothing industry, amylase, because I'm giving the example of bacteria. You can try with albumin also. So look, it's an alpha amylase protein. And you can select here everything. Look, you can select here the source organism. For example, Klebsiella pneumoniae. Everything is coming, the example. If I select here the bacteria, we can go into more and you can select them also. So, for example, this is from streptomyces. Uh, alpha amylase from... This is from a plant, Fasciolus vulgaris, common beans. So here you see, you get a, uh, a protein alpha amylase and uh, you get it the, from a bacteria. You just go into the structure. And here, if you go into the faster sequence, look, you get the entire protein sequence. Let it get downloaded. Look, you can see you get the entire protein sequence. So these are all amino acid. You can see the amino acids here. So it's a 573 amino acids long, a big protein sequence. If we try with albumin, for example, look here, you get the structure of many albumins. For, for example, this is a serum albumin, not of egg. But if we go, go here, if you click the structure and if you go into download file faster sequence, you will get the structure of the faster sequence. And look, it is giving you how the protein sequence is looking, which method you classified the protein, you, you understand the structure of the protein, what is the resolution of the structure, who deposited, which year it was deposited. So you get the organism, the classification of the protein, all the details you will get it here all the details so this is the way you can download you can get to know about everything for example this is for example this is a carbohydrate database called the EPS database, polysaccharide database. So here you get the structure of the polysaccharides or carbohydrates produced by a bacteria. So here you get, you see here database. You go there and you can search the name of the bacteria and you get the structure of the carbohydrate. Look. That's the beauty of a database by informatics that you can deposit the structure of a macromolecules. Or for example, if you go to Rice Genome Annotation Project, you get the information related to all Rice genes, 
the models, the gene size, the exon, everything related to it. So in this way, there are a lot of databases in bioinformatics. So in this way, you can start like probably you can have a play of searching what databases you can get of which organism, not only of microorganisms. I was talking only giving the example of microbiology to understand bioinformatics. But for example, if you were searching information of a protein in RCSB PDB, you will get information not only about microbiology of plants, of animals. You can refine the search. You can get all the information related to it. But for example, there is a E. coli database also. I will give you the link. Look. So in this link, you will get it's because we in science, we work with the ecosystem. In science, we work with a lot of models. What is a model organism? Where working is very easy. In case of plant, Arabidopsis is a small plant and used as a model organism. C. elegans is often used as a model organism for animals. In case of bacteria, Escherichia coli is often considered as a model organism. So here in ECOSIC, you get all the information and uh, about Escherichia coli, about the, uh, you, you can search, you, can, you will get the gene, you will get the protein, the metabolites, the pathways, everything related to E. coli. So just an example that you can search in internet. Nowadays, a lot of things you can search about. I, I will give the polysaccharide database link also. Mm. So this is just one one example to understand that biological macromolecules can be biological macromolecules produced by microorganisms can be explored in a variety of websites where the data are stored okay just to just to make it more simpler way that the microorganisms or the prokaryotic systems they have a lot of data all the bacteria number of bacteria that are explored and yet to be explored it's a huge huge amount of data all the DNA sequences all their nucleotide sequences that are explored till date you can get it in NCBI or in DDBJ. Okay. So uh, there you can search the information related to DNA. If you are trying to search the information related to microbial proteins, microbial enzymes, it's another type of macromolecule. You can go into RCSB and you can get the information related to protein. It's a protein data bank. This will have the information of plants also, of animals also, but you can define the search. You so see in the left there where you can define. If you want to search about carbohydrate produced by a bacteria, you can go into this EPSDB. So there you will get the polysaccharide related structure. If you want to see entirely the metabolic pathways, the genes, the proteins, the nucleotides related to Escherichia coli, a model prokaryotic system or a model microbial system, you can go into ecosystem. So that's the way bioinformatics is keeping the information saved of all the microorganisms that are explored till date and will be explored in future. And why we are doing it? So that we can identify and we can store their information. And also they are producing a lot of compounds. They are producing proteins. They are producing polysaccharides. They are producing bioactive compounds, secondary metabolites. And they have a lot of use. As I was telling, they have use in food industry. They, are, they have use in pharmaceutical industry, in biomedicines, in waste, water, in waste recycling, uh, in microbiomes, maintaining the microbiomes, maintaining our ecosystem and planet Earth. So basically, we will get all those informations in these bioinformatic databases. That's just a point of view, like how to see bioinformatics related with microbiology. But more than that, there is a there is a more vaster way. Probably after this, when you will go to do a mini project, if some of you have interest in understanding uh, microbiology, understanding the relationship of microbiology with bioinformatics, there we can do more things. I will 
just try to uh, give you i will start that paper of naya naya was uh, the last year bixs student was students like you all she was a student of 11th when she started the work and the data was published in a good journal it was published in an international journal the work that she has done during her bixs school project so that i talk with proud this is a very proud thing for our bixs kids also that they have never naya have never understood bioinformatics before probably she was like more bigger than you all kids because she was in 11th but then also she didn't studied bioinformatics before so see, that was the first time that i will i will try to share that with you if i can find that paper find it this can give you all a motivation also that if you think that okay these are all very hard things or this that the scientists are doing or the or our seniors are doing or much elders are doing it's nothing like this for example if i tell you people probably know a lot more about smartphone than me because why why the thing is that i am not i am i am not into smartphone that days but the kids these days knows how to run a smartphone or run a laptop so the time that you are developing you are putting into that part developing the skill with computer you can put this in the same time developing your computer skill and that the same time you can understand computational biology microbiology or plant biology or animal biology with the help of the bioinformatics tools computational biology tools so in a way you will have a interdisciplinary approach to life i will try to give this link it's a lot of things that we discussed today you will get it in this link in this paper that naya worked so most of the things that i was i was talking about protein structure everything no need to try to read and all this but try to see that it was a beautiful it was a small project that naya did for like Two three months, she was behind it. She wrote the paper, the draft, and everything. So it was like a continuous six months. We were like together. We were trying to uh, sum up the thing, and that resulted into something. So she was just kids like you all. And feel free to to ask even after the class. If 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 microbiology feels like very big for you, feel free to write in WhatsApp like. any silly question or now any silly question that you feel like probably you do not know ribosome so if you see something about ribosome and you want to ask me what is this so even feel free to ask me that because this is a moment that you are probably getting a little updated compared to your other school mates isn't it so try to take the maximum opportunity of this this moment that you are getting every weeks the classes with all the Mm, all the sirs that every saturday you are getting so i'm i'm like open for questions even if it's not related to bioinformatics feel free to ask me question related to microbiology also Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, what is the meaning of archaea? Archaea is a it's uh it's a name of a microorganism. Archaea is a structure. Archaea and bacteria are different. Till a till maybe twenty years back, we had the concept that archaea and bacteria are same. But the structure of archaea, the the uh the cell morphology of archaea is different compared to bacteria. The cell membrane of archaea is more hard. The DNA uh, in case of uh, bacteria is negatively super coiled. In case of archaea, it's positively coiled. So even the coiling of the DNA is different. Why? Because archaea have the capacity to grow in a very extreme environment. Maybe hundred and ten degree centigrade boiling water. Imagine a life can survive in boiling water, but archaea are surviving over there. Or archaea can grow in methane environment. So there is no oxygen and there is only methane. So this is the way the adaptation of the cells are very different in archaea. 
so archaea is a whole different class of organism like bacteria there is a separate group of living being called archaea like virus there is a separate group of living being called archaea ma'am can i ask something yes sure ma'am i was uh, ma i was trying to say that uh, when we observe uh, a microbe in a microscope why is it necessary to stain it uh, it's necessary to stain it uh, often there, there are a lot of kind of stain if you are using it in a simple confocal microscope probably in your school also you can see it that often we take the microscope towards a window isn't it so that the light can come so that time we stain it because microbes do not have a color so you can just see a small dot but if you stain it totally the entire cell membrane is covered with the stain so you see a color so rather than a just a black dot you see a entire small black dot with violet color it's easier to identify them that's the reason we colored them the similar is applicable even for confocal microscopy that is a very up to date till date microscopical technique that we are using to see microorganisms more bigger for example you have dna inside a microbe and the microbes are producing polysaccharide okay so you can put stain you can stain bacteria you can put the color that will only bind with dna only bind with the cell membrane or cell wall and only bind with the polysaccharide then you merge all the three you can see three different colors like the surrounding is totally pink with polysaccharide the bacteria is blue and inside the dna is probably red so imagine the contrast you can visualize what is there inside so you can see your target part of the bacteria with the staining that's the that's why we are using it thank you ma'am welcome Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Thank you so much. and i i don't know if like the another kid shu he was um, listening or even if you like feel shy feel free to write even in whatsapp and even for kinjal and shivang if you have any question feel free to talk to rajul ma'am to talk to with me or even you can write to me directly you have my mail id uh, that we were like having the group mail from rajul ma'am so feel free to ask me any time and if we are getting a scope to do a small project that time also we can discuss a lot so even the next 7 days try to understand the things try to go into the links that we have shared and if you feel hard at any point of time feel free to ask me any questions that you feel related to microbiology also No, I am in the group. No, my mother, uh, I am in the group, but I, I have not registered it. Thank you, Rajul. Thank you, Rajul, for the organization. Thank you, ma'am. So much. Thank you, kids. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you.